Hi, I'm Beck, and welcome to my August to be read plans. I want to talk about seven books. Some of them are new releases, other ones are backlist books. So without further ado, let's get into my daunting list. I say daunting because I read roughly five to six books a month and I've got about seven on this list, but then mentally I've also got others added to that list. So will I get through them is another question. But the first book I'm definitely going to get through because I have harped on about this all year. And that is Brother Song by TJ Klune, which is the fourth book in the Green Creek series and it follows werewolves and Ox, who is our protagonist, his father leaves him and his mother at a very young age and has caused a lot of emotional scarring for Ox personally. And so when Ox is trying to put himself back together, he gets a job in this small town for a garage. And then across the road, the Bennett family move in. The Bennett family is where the werewolf part comes in. And then there is a male-male romance that buds in the midst of this. And there are connections and tension, and it's just beautiful. It's got such amazing found family dynamics, which is what I adore in my books and then each book so far in the series has been five stars for me so I'm assuming safely that Brother Song will also be a five stars plus it is the last book in a series so I'm going to be feeling much anguish by the time this release hits my doorstep. Stay tuned for me to be upset but in a good way hopefully it doesn't give me a book hangover and then I don't read the rest of the books on my to be read list for the month. I guess if one book to give me a book hangover is not enough I have one to go straight into afterwards and and that is The Pairing by Casey McQuiston. They wrote Red, White and Royal Blue, which is one of my favorite contemporary book romances, rom-coms. And I'm so excited that another book by Casey is coming out soon because I believe it follows two foodies and they are rivals. Obviously they become lovers. It's also a male-male romance. I don't know how it's gonna go, but the pairing obviously refers to wine and food. So I'm looking forward to experiencing their writing again. It has been way too long. So that one comes out, I think on the 6th or the 9th of August. Either way, it's in the you know leading half of the month. So with Brother Song coming out at the last day of July and then the pairing coming out a week later, I'm going to be in utter emotional anguish. <laughs> but bring it on, I say, bring it on. Because those are two physical books and hopefully they'll be easier for me to get through. I have an audio book to kind of change things up and that is The Phoenix Keeper, which is a sapphic romance. So not male male romance like the other two releases. This is female female romance. And this one follows a woman who loves phoenixes and is a keeper at this magical zoo. And she's in a direct rivalry with the Griffin Keeper and she's trying to reinvigorate the Phoenix breeding program and get everyone as excited about Phoenixes as she is. Obviously she's going to have a rivalry to romance with the lady who runs all the Griffins and so I hope they form this awesome connection after a whole bunch of tension and then they realize they're falling for each other. I quite like Rivals to Lovers because it forms this unnecessary like almost self-competitive tension with each other and then they realize in their competitiveness and become self-aware and they go oh actually I have a lot of feelings and I love it when that happens it is so wholesome so I'm looking forward to reading The Phoenix Keeper for a lot of people I think it would have released already but the Australian release date is weird so we've got it on like the 8th or 9th of August hopefully when that comes out I will have finished Brother Song and I'll be on to the pairing just in time to listen to the audiobook for The Phoenix Keeper in tandem. I'm also mostly talking about like new anticipated releases because you might notice about my TBR cart, but I've got books on there by Brandon Sanderson and Robin Hobb and you know the Rick Riordan books. All of those I've read before. I'm just you know putting books on there to make it look like there's populated books on my Toby Red cart, but I actually finished my TBR pile and I finished that like towards the end of July. So I've gone out and I've got a couple of eBooks. I'm obviously anticipating a bunch of new releases as well, but I don't actually have any more physical books to read, which just boggles my mind, but it also makes me go, I want to go out and buy every single book even if I don't have any interest in it or know what the synopsis is. It's given me like book gremlin buying vibes. So I need to just chill and go, my anticipated releases are coming. Calm down, Beck. Case in point, I borrowed this next one from the library instead of going out and buying it. And that is When the Moon Hatched. And I don't know anything about this except that it is a very hyped romanticy. So it's got a fantasy, like strong fantasy element with world building and such. I don't know if it's Fae related because me and Fae stories tend to not vibe very well all of the time. So I think it's obviously about two rival clans or supernatural creatures, I'm not sure. And then the rivals of each side 
form a romance and that's the romanticy part of the romance fantasy so with all that said i don't really know how i'm going to feel about this usually romanticy it will either get right into my brain and i'll be like i'm obsessed with this or i'll be like i can't stand this so hopefully it is the former and not the latter and then speaking of more romanticy i was just minding my business the other week and then i got a notification from my library libby app and i was like oh i will take this yes please and they have just got the audiobook coming in for Bloodguard, which is another romanticy. I think a lot of people might have read this because I believe it's out. I have seen the physical book in print, so I don't know if that means that there was a staggered release and then Australia had international stock come in and that's how I've seen it. But either way, again, it's another romanticy book. I think it's got something to do with potentially vampires given that it's got blood guard in the title but i don't know i'm happy to go in pretty unaware so i'll see how i feel depending on how the writing style and the development of the world is in the first like opening chapter and from there i'll go yeah i like the taste of this no i don't like it at all and i'll just return it for someone else to enjoy instead so those are two romanticy books that i went the safe road with instead of the book haul gremlin mode i'm kind of proud of myself actually and then while i was recently on my honeymoon i ended up re reading all of the Rick Riordan books that you see behind you. So I listened to all of those on audiobook from my library. Because I was traveling, it was much easier to listen to them than to physically, you know, cart them along in my suitcase. So after rereading all of those, I'm now like, I'm in the mood to continue. And I know that the characters from, you know, the Olympus books carry over into the Trials of Apollo series. So I'm looking forward to reading about all of them again. Oh, I know that it's going to tug on my heartstrings a lot, but I'm really excited to reread those books. The main character is Apollo and he gets cast down by Zeus because he's done some wrongs and Zeus is like, you need to get back on the bandwagon and right your wrongs. So now Apollo is like a 16 year old boy and he's got to go on quests with the heroes of Camp Half-Blood to restore his honor and his name and also figure out why the prophecies aren't working at the moment. So I really just love the style of Rick Riordan's stories. I love Greek myths so much. So I'm really looking forward to my reread. Hopefully my audiobooks that I've put on hold come available during August, but I will be slotting them in in between other stuff as it comes up. Then I have The Tainted Cup as an ebook by Robert Jackson Bennett. This one is kind of waiting in the wings. My priority is my, you know, anticipated releases as physical copies. But if I end up going, oh, you know, I feel like doing something on my Kindle because it's easier to get through books on that. I don't know why I somehow read faster on my Kindle. I downloaded The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett who wrote The City of Stairs, Foundry Side, a whole bunch of other books and I'm hoping that I like it. The premise is that there is a duo investigating the death or potential murder of this guy because a giant mushroom tree burst from his chest and that's how he died. So it's like a fantasy supernatural murder and I don't know any more than that except the sidekick guy who is investigating the murder has a photographic memory. I think Robert Jackson Bennett does great mystery suspense because I really enjoyed City of Stairs by him. So I think these two might be in a similar vein to each other in terms of those themes in that genre. But when I read Foundry Side and City of Blades, I didn't like them as much. I gave Foundry Side a three stars and I DNF'd the second City of Stairs book. So, you know, I think it is safe to say I have a preferred style of Robert Jackson Bennett and hopefully The Tainted Cup hits that style. But now we are onto my last book in this to be read goals video. And that would be The Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson, which is the second book in the Stormlight Archive. I've read these books multiple times before. I've only read Rhythm of War once, but I'm planning to reread it before the fifth book comes out in December this year. So pray for me. Basically each of these books, even though this looks small, it is part one, part two is on my cart. So, you know, it's a thousand pages long, which is an undertaking. And I've I've done a whole best bits of the way of kings for anyone who is a fan of Brandon Sanderson or Stormlight. Please go and nerd out with me in that video. But safe to say that if I want an easy five stars, well, not an easy because it will take me time. But if I get through my anticipated releases and depending on how I go with the Tainted Cup, I'm going to be picking up Words of Radiance. So we'll see how that goes. I have a lot of goals. Surely other stuff will come in on Libby as well. Maybe I'll 
you know, go out and buy books, like I said, who knows, stuff will happen. These are my rough plans and I hope that I stick to them. But thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you have any anticipated releases that I might have missed throughout this TBR video. But thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.